All right, Evan, when you're ready. Physical security hasn't changed much in recent years. You build a fence, build a wall, uh, choose not to give out your social security number, driver's license, those, type, those types of things. But with the internet being a new creation relatively, we're having to overcome those same struggles that we did back in the days that we were trying to keep foreign invaders out. So I chose to do my research on the topic of consumer privacy on the internet with the question, how has the development of technology caused a decrease in privacy for consumers? So, the problem with the internet is that there are defaults, and those defaults are typically older standards, or older protocols that are less secure by today's other standards. For example, there was HTTP that was invented in the late 80s, early 90s. It's the most common, most ubiquitous uh, standard for transferring communications across the internet, like web pages. However, back in the late 80s, early 90s, no one really cared about protecting that content. All that they were going to use the internet for was just blog posts or cat videos. However, with the rise of e-commerce sites like Amazon and eBay, you need some security there so that not just anybody can see what you're talking about, what you're buying, where you live, things like that. So they created HTTPS, the S standing for secure. The HTTPS uses other protocols that were developed independently and then puts it all together in a nice little package so that you, the end user, the consumer, don't have to change anything about the way that you use the web. It's all just protected. So when you use those services online, like Google Search, you're putting data into a free service. What is done with this data? Well, Google, when you put it in the search, they run it against all these web pages and give you your answers. But they also keep a copy of what you asked. Keep a copy of how far you scroll down, what links you click on. They use these things for collecting, you know, advertising data so that they can know what you like or better improve their search results. But did you agree to this? They are collecting your personal information based on their privacy policy that you didn't necessarily read because you probably just clicked accept. So these free services are collecting your information without you necessarily knowing what they're collecting. You just know that they are collecting stuff. And this is bad because once a company owns your data, they own it. They can do whatever they wish. They typically end up selling the data to other companies that are built to just hold customer data and sell that off to other individuals. There have been cases where uh, this data was sold to people. They requested the data for themselves just to see what those companies knew about them. And the information that they had was surprisingly very accurate. And one of such cases was recorded by uh, Max Eddy, who wrote for PC Magazine and he is an enthusiast of software and security related issues. And he wrote that data on the internet is a currency. It, it, it outranks the US dollar supremely just in metaphorical value. Because if you know your people, if you know your target audience, you can sell them anything. So those are bad uses of collecting information, but there are also good ones. You can solve the world's problems by collecting what everyone thinks. Now this is just a broad idea, but the, uh, the presenter of a TED talk, Jane McGonagall, um, uses video games that she creates to have the gamers come up with new ideas about how to solve real world problems. She uses their interactions in the games, the things that they come up with to beat these problems, such as an oil shortage, to 
collect them and give them to other scientists who research, is that a feasible option for the real world? Uh, another good use of information comes from Edward Kessler, who wrote a article on interfaith relations. Now, that doesn't necessarily connect to the internet, but he was able to draw his conclusions from social media. Social media is collecting all your information that you supply it, your tweets on Twitter, your posts on Facebook, things like that, and it's able to build what kind of person you are, and he was able to use this to come to his conclusion that interfaith relations have actually improved. Internet of Things devices are becoming more prevalent in the home, and they connect to the internet and provide you with a service, whether that be Amazon's Alexa sitting in your home and providing you with a personal assistant, or just allowing you to use your phone app to turn on and off the light. These devices are connecting to the internet and to other servers in other places but they are collecting lots of data about when you use your devices, what you're saying if it's a voice activated device, so that they can use this information to tailor build future services for you or whatever they so choose to do with your information. Um, businesses that collect the, this information need to be secure so that when they have all this massive amount of information, Hackers can't come in and steal that from them. So the New York Department of Financial Services conducted a survey that um, went and asked insurance companies in that state how they handle certain issues when it comes to information security. And the survey concluded that while most companies surveyed have good security practices, no, none of them are perfect, whether that be they need to instrument a budget specifically for their defense department, or if they need to train their employees on how to better deal with issues that come up. So some future solutions, you could create better defense techniques, so better tools that will prevent hackers from stealing information, but that only helps so much because if you can make a better wall, someone can make a better cutting implement, so to speak, within the metaphor, to get around this wall. So it would defend services and companies for a time, but overall it will become outdated. Instead, a better option would be to implement legislation that requires companies to tell their users what they collect and why and then allow them to request that information back and require those same companies to meet a certain standard of uh, defense requirements for their own systems. Thank you. All right. Okay, so how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research? And did it go in a different direction than you planned? Well, my research question started out as just a general, I want to look into privacy on the internet. I didn't really have a focus until it occurred to me that all these companies are collecting lots of information on us, but we don't know what they're collecting or how they're using it for. So I was able to make my question more specific, especially as I found other research that would to um, end up with what I decided on in the end. Okay. Um, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? I would advise them to consult the way that it's been done in the past. Because even though the internet is not, um, not an, an old thing, there are ways that people have come up with defense in the past and ways of securing privacy for their users. And if you look at those to see how those techniques failed or were uh, overcome or how they were successful, 
then you can build your research to see, to highlight um, what areas need to be better covered. All right, thanks.